The percussion is quite the essential part of the orchestra. While not being as completely necessary as something like the strings, percussion provides a very unique and powerful sound to an orchestration. I've never been that amazing at percussion in my own work, so over the past week I've studied the dynamics and use of percussion, and now I'm here to share this knowledge with you guys. Let's start with the basics. Percussion is definitely the most miscellaneous section of the orchestra, so it has a lot of variance to it. A violin and a cello match quite a lot. That's the same also with the trumpet and the tuba and the flute and the bassoon. But in the percussion section, you got the piano and the wood. Because of this, when writing for percussion, you really need to make sure you know what the f*** you're doing. Some percussion instruments are made to blend in with the rest of the orchestra. These pretty much include the pitched instruments. Others, however, are made to stand out and are meant to be felt by the listener, not just heard. These often include the unpitched. So now, let's take a look at some of the most popular instruments and how to use them. The timpani is probably the most popular in orchestral music. Despite its low pitch, it wouldn't act too much like a bass instrument. It can sometimes accompany the melody, but could also just act as an interesting little flair to the orchestration. The glockenspiel makes an annoying metallic sound, so it will often just accompany the melody on the high ends. The xylophone has a nicer wooden sound, so it usually be played as a little individual detail. The celestia tends to be used a good bit more than the piano because of its mysterious sound. But the piano can still be used if you want something a bit more happy. Or it can be sad if you want. The piano is just a lot less specific in its uses in the Celestia. Celeste. Celeste. That's weird. The snare drum is military related, but is more commonly used for something intimidating. Shaker instruments are used just to give some happy energy. The taiko and the toms are mid-ranged instruments, so they're played to establish some rhythm. And of course, the cymbal is used at any time you want the audience to pay attention. Its loud and high sound will stand out and add a lot of power to wherever you're using it. A bass drum could also fulfill this role too if you wanted it to sound a bit more edgy. There are a whole lot more percussion instruments out there, but they're rarely used, and you'll probably be able to understand what their use is by a cymbal listen. Now that you know what percussion is, this is how you use it. For traditional orchestral music, this can be a difficult topic, because it's not just a simple kick, snare, repeat of almost every other genre of popular music now. The orchestra tends to use the percussion section for very specific reasons, such as the occasional hit for something big. All of the intricacies for this style of orchestra percussion can be a bit difficult to explain, so how about we just look at a piece together. For this video, we'll look at Star Wars Episode Eight, the Battle of Crate specifically, one of my favorites from the soundtrack, providing music that is both fitting for the present yet reminiscent of the past, giving us a good look at the various use of percussion and its effect. Let's break down a random 30 seconds and see what the percussion does. Okay, for this section, I can't be bothered to really write a script, but I do have some notes scat scattered around here. Why, why am I doing this without a script? I do have some notes scattered around this little sheet music that I have, or at least on my end of it. So I can just be reading through those, and I'm not going to be wasting too much of your time by just sort of filling it with ums. So let's get started. <laughs> At the beginning, all of it sort of starts out calm, but once it begins to lead up to the big sort of build-up, uh, we have a timpani doing a crescendo right here, which leads to a big hit of the same note, which comes in at the other measure. Um, and the choice for these notes, um, they are C notes because they are acting as the, the, the note second down on an F minor chord, which is being um, established with this one right up here. <laughs> And then, of course, there's the big hit, which relieves the crescendo of all the tension it's built up. Um, and then this, it starts this thing. I think it's the wood blocks. I'm not too sure if that's the exact instrument, but that was the closest I could find. Just a small, barely noticeable, light little percussion thing in the background of some sort of wood variant. Um, and then it sort of works for the first two out of three measures in which this short little um, intense bit is being played. And they just add some flavor. And I also forgot to mention, um, after the timpani does their big hit, there is a bass drum hit a quarter of a note later, 
um, which sort of acts as a bit of an echo kind of thing, because you know you're gonna hear the, the you're gonna hear the timpani um, with the bass drum, which is a much lower sound. It's not gonna be heard that much. Sort of acts as a bit of an echo, you know, just a nice, lovely little detail to add. Then when the woodblocks cut off, they build up some tension for it to eventually return, to, or at least return to something similar, if it's not the exact same thing. And it does with um, the next measure starting out with. Um, a note being played by the entirety of the orchestra and the concert bass drum being played one note on that for a more impactful kind of return and then a cymbal comes in a quarter of a note layer kind of reflective of what happened before um, but it acts like this going from low to high to sort of end the previous idea and allow for a new one to kind of set in <laughs> Then when the new kind of melody begins to come in, um, the timpani complements it pretty much exactly, um, which is kind of like the more imp more dramatic version than the crescendo which we had previously. Um, it's more impactful, noticeable, and it builds up with the rest of the what the orchestra is playing until it gets to finally where the actual stuff begins to happen and um, there's just a single hit. After that single hit, a quarter note later, a cymbal hits, but for actually something different. While it could be for um, sort of the complement of the timpani hit, the quarter note prior, um, it probably is most likely for the little run thing right there, which I think is played by the violin. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, and it just sort of makes it more important. It really gets you to pay attention to it. <laughs> Then at this big note right here, this is one of the, the massive ones right here where like every single instrument is playing, as well as the timpani being played right there, um, and then there's a cymbal as well. It's a big dramatic release, and literally in the note I wrote, PAY ATTENTION in all caps. So yeah, that's really what it's <laughs> supposed to be doing. Then the timpani comes in for um, doing a small, not really crescendo-like thing because it's just three simple notes, but there are third notes specifically so that um, they can sort of build up the... Um, what's the word? The the style that the notes are going to be in. It's a triplet little thing right there, and all the notes following that are triplets, so it does kind of make the listener expect something, <laughs> some sort of structure of notes. And then the notes being played after that um, are F notes, and they are kind of like the ones that we did previous. The reason why they're F notes is because they're, adding, they're acting as the note down from the top of it. As. I don't I don't know the exact word, but it's acting the note down on an A sharp major A sharp minor chord, um, so it's kind of giving some more support to the the creation of that chord. It follows it for a little bit until there's this little bit right here at the end where it sort of speeds up a little bit and then the symphony cuts off, and then there's this little sort of thing right here. I didn't really, really know how to describe this. I just said lack of percussion in little scramble thing here. I'm not too sure exactly what I was thinking when I wrote that, but lack of percussion just because it's one of those weird sort of intermission bits where the notes are being played incredibly low, um, so really adding percussion would just make it sound clustered until that final note hits at the end of it with a cymbal right there complementing it and the bass notes um, such as for them the timpani and the bass drum don't really come in just so that it seems more grand and elaborate. If the timpani and the concert bass drum were to hit right then, it would seem a bit more conclusive, but that's not the case because just a couple bits later, it starts up with a new note and pretty much repeats itself from the from where this interesting bit is right here. So yeah, that actually didn't turn out that bad. Let's get back to the script. Now for the other common use of orchestral percussion, rhythm. It's not actually that uncommon. It's mostly found in modern film score and it's used to guide the listener during a part that is really crazy or just really simple. Here are some examples of how good and effective rhythmic percussion can have on a piece. is it that makes this rhythmic percussion fit so well into the piece? If it's not holding a real purpose, then what is so special about it? Great question that you did not ask. 
The secret to percussion in those examples, as well as its use in mostly every other song, is fullness. When the song is reaching a height, some percussion can hit the listener quite deeply and add more chaos to the sound while simultaneously emphasizing order. When the song is slow and emotional, or fast and intense, percussion adds movement and keeps it sounding alive. A layer of dense sound is kept at the bottom and keeps everything sounding full. It manages to remain subconscious and not annoying to the listener by being balanced in relation to the rest of the orchestra and even the other percussion instruments. Check this out. This is a simple little percussion thing that I wrote. It only consists of a few instruments, all of which being on pitch percussion. When played by itself, it sounds full and complete. Throw some actual music on top of it and it sounds even better. The key to this is the variation of instruments used and how they were used. The brain can determine higher pitch sounds more easily, so they are used frequently and fill in all the empty space. Lower pitch sounds are not so easily picked up, so they are to be used not as frequent, and are often dedicated to forming the beat structure or something. The high sounds are to be a clustered yet ordered mass of sounds that make it sound alive and fill in the base of the higher parts of the frequency spectrum. On the other hand, the low sounds are kept rather moderate because they're meant to be felt by the listener, not so much heard. You will hear a bass drum playing 16th notes, but you will feel it playing half notes, and that's what good music is all about. Feeling. Oh yeah, the mid-range instruments try to be used with somewhat similar intensity to the highs, but still not going to sicko mode. Being balanced, like in the mid-range. This is really the shape you want your percussion in some to look like, for rhythm at least. Additional random percussion instruments can be added at other times, even if they mess up the shape a good bit, as long as it complements with the rest of the orchestra, you should be good. So that's it. You have been blessed with my knowledge. If you have any questions, comments, or other percussion tips, then leave them in the comments section below. Of course, I'm no expert in all of this, but if you were looking for a quick, simple guide to orchestral percussion, I hope this helped you out. Thanks for watching, lads, and as always...